Welcome everyone. Before we get started, a quick introduction. My name is Amber Seymour and I run Urban Timber Revival where I love to take old wood and upcycle it into beautiful artwork. So if you've taken my classes before, we have made some very large pinwheels, more decorative art, but we're going to take the same concept today and shrink it down and make these cute little garden stakes. So you'll notice I have a red, white, and blue theme here because I am building these for my summer flower pots. But I also do different colors throughout the year and change out as the seasons go. So I have fall colors, I do them for Christmas, really any holiday you can think of or theme, you just switch out to the colors to your liking. So I hope this gives you some ideas and you enjoy the class. So before we get started on our project, we're going to touch on some basic materials and any incidental items we'll talk about as we go. So this is a beginner woodworking project, so you will need some tools. I am using a miter saw. This is just a little baby small one you can get at the hardware store. You will need some wood. So I'm choosing to use lath today, and I'm going to come down and show it to you because it's very thin. We are working on garden picks today. You don't, you don't want them too heavy or you know they might kind of like tilt over in your pots. If you don't have access to lath at your hardware store, you could take a two by four and just rip it down into thin strips. I often do that all the time. We have a pin nailer, which you may or may not use for this project. They're so light that really wood glue will hold it, but I'll do it both ways for you. And then we need some wood glue, a little sander, paint, and a paintbrush. So let's get started. And before we get started, I just want to talk about protection a little bit. Make sure you're wearing your eye protection and ear protection. Very important. And I wear an apron to protect myself from my mess. So <laughs> just be safe, people. Let's get going. So we're just going to get right to it. I decided not to videotape me painting the wood because we all know how to paint. So I didn't do like a spectacular job. These are outside and mine are gonna be rustic. So just a basic coverage on here. And we're going to start doing our cuts. So on the miter saw, I'm gonna set this to 45 degrees and I'm not gonna move it. I'm gonna do the same cut for all of our pieces. Even when we get to the stake, I'm gonna have a 45 degree cut on that little piece that goes into the ground. So let's get started. So when you're cutting your wood, you want all of these little pinwheel pieces to be the exact same size. So you can do a few things. Like for instance, you could just line each cut up to this little banding when you cut, and then they would be probably close enough. I've done that many times when I'm in a hurry. Or I'm gonna take you to my bigger saw. If you wanted to, you could build a jig. And a jig really, all that is, um, it's like a stop. So I'm going to put this wood in and see how I can't go further than that. That will ensure each cut I do is the exact same size. So you just choose what's right for you. I already have this set up, so I'm going to go ahead and move to the big saw. All right, so it's time to start cutting the lath. And so I'm going to cut it in one direction first, kind of the paint side up. And we have that jig there, so they'll all be the exact same size. And then when I get about halfway through this piece of wood, you're gonna see me turn it and cut from the other side upside down. So the reason I'm doing that is I only painted one side of the wood and I need paint going both directions. That probably made no sense. I'm gonna show you a picture. So we'll get a few more cuts in and move on over to that. So I'm just pausing for a moment and I want to show you an example why you saw me flip that wood over. So I kind of cut on the painted side, I flipped it over and I cut from the non-painted side. And that's because when you line these up, you need to have two different cuts so that you have paint on both sides. If you didn't do that, you would have half of your pieces wouldn't have paint on the front. And I'll explain that more later when we put these together, but that is an important piece. Make sure you cut from both sides. I'm just going to speed the rest of this up. It's best just to do all your cuts at one time and get a big pile going. So I'm just pausing for a moment to show you all our hard work so far. So you will notice if you watch any of my videos, I build in bulk. It's just faster than one at a time. So if you think you want a bunch of these, just go for it. 
do a couple pieces of lath in each color, paint them out, and get a nice big pile like this. So the next step is to think about how we're going to put all these together. So we're going to make a little tiny backer that we can glue these on and that's the next step. So now we need to add some support to our pieces. So I'm a big proponent of using whatever you have on hand. I love scraps and this happens to be a scrap from a local lumber yard. Looking at this tag here, it looks like it's about 3 8 inch thick. Just so you know what I'm using for these and you can see about how thick that is. That will work great. So I've assembled one of these stars and we'll talk about how to do that next. But before we really start assembling them, we need to get a little backer for them, which again is this piece of plywood. So I'm just gonna take my ruler on here and see about how big they are. So it looks to me like I should cut my backer about two and a half inches. So I'm just going to take this over here and we will do a simple little line here. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm gonna take this over to my miter saw and cut it. And then we'll have a bunch of little backers for these little stars. All right, so it's time to start cutting the plywood. So I'm just bringing this over to my large saw just because I'd have to make less cuts. If you decide you like woodworking, I would suggest that you invest in a miter saw that has a sliding arm like I'm using here. It just makes life easier. So I'm going to cut three of these and then I will start cutting them even smaller and that should give me plenty of backers to get these going. So we're just going to stack them up and I'm going to make all my cuts at once. I don't always advise that, but these are just small little pieces, so it can handle it. So I'm just going to stack these up. And we're almost done. So I'm going to show you how to start putting these together and they're all the same size so there's really nothing to it. It's more about picking your color combinations. So I tend to start with the short edge and just put my first two pieces together and then I'll build off that. So I like to do four colors but three colors also works and you could do all different colors and think of those different seasons. Christmas, fall, Halloween. You can really do these to fit any season. All right, so I'm gonna bring a little piece of wood over and put our little backer on there. And I do that just so I don't gum up my workbench with glue, because I'm kind of sloppy, I'll be honest. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get that nice and covered with glue. And then that piece I pre-built, it's all ready for me. And I'm just going to rebuild it on this little piece of wood. And also, I'm going to get the star out of our way and build other ones. So it's kind of a, like I use it to transport the wood to a different piece of the bench, too. So we'll get rid of that one. And then we'll do one more here. So again, I build it up front. And again, this is because you're going to, pretty soon your hands will be full of glue. So I like to do a lot of these, actually. Sometimes I'll build like 20 of them, and then I'll do all the glue up at one time. But we'll just do one at a time for now. And if you want to make this really easy on yourself, paint both sides of the wood. Then you kind of don't have to fish around for the best fit. You just flip it over. Okay, we're gonna glue this up again. And use a generous amount, but not so much it seeps through the front. Because then you have a messy cleanup ahead of you. Okay, we're gonna build this one one more time. Okay. So there it is, and I just kind of push in the middle one more time, and we'll move that off the bench. 
Okay, if you look to the left, I still have quite a big pile of pieces to get through. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and give you a couple different views. But as you can see, it's very simple. And once you've done a couple of them, they go super fast. It's a really fast project. So we're going to keep working this. And you can tell that I'm not building everyone the exact same way. I just think it's more interesting when you have the mountaineer pots or in a yard that they all look a little different. Okay, so we built quite a few. So the wood glue is still wet. So I'm just going to let these be for a while, for about an hour before I mess with them. And then we'll come back and work on the stake and getting everything attached. All right, now that we have our stars built, we're going to just attach a little stake to them. So I'm going to use the exact same wood that we used for the stars and we're going to split one of these right down the middle and that will be our stake. And I'll do it about every 12 inches. So every 12 inches you'll get two stakes. So I'm going to go ahead and get those cut. So I am just going to measure these real quick. I do want them uniform and not all wacky. So we're just going to make sure we get the 12 inches here. And then we'll move over to the saw. All right, so I'm taking this to my table saw and I'm cutting it down every 12 inches. And once I have my four pieces, I'm going to flip it and I'm going to rip it straight down the middle. Now, normally that's something that I would do on a table saw, but for sake of this video, I'm just going to do it here. And I'm securing that down with another piece of wood applying pressure so my fingers are out of the way. You want to make sure you're safe and keep all your digits. So I rip that down the middle and then I'm going to move my miter saw back to 45 degrees and we'll do one more cut just to get that sharp edge so that you can stick that stake in the dirt. So now if you look to the right, you'll see I have a big stack of stakes to go with all these barn stars we made. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue and a little pressure and we'll nail that in. I usually do like three little pin nails. If you have a brad nailer, that works just fine too. So we'll do another one here. And I do a generous amount of glue because really that's what in the long term holds things together. All right, I'm gonna speed this up. As you saw, we had quite a few to work through. And this is the fun process because you can really see what they're going to look like. So I'm just gonna leave all of these face down. And again, I'm gonna let them sit for about another hour. We'll pick one up and peek. They're super cute. You can wipe off that excess glue if you like or just let it sit, it doesn't matter. All right, we're gonna let these dry. All right, everyone, so we're at the conclusion of our class. So I took these out of the garage and just put them in my own garden so you could see them all. There was just so many and they're just so adorable. I hope you experiment with different colors, maybe different sizes, just make them your own. I think that they're just so fun to individualize. And I hope you enjoyed this class. Thank you.